I told you guys I came across something and it, and I wasn't sure if I should share it and I talked about it on that earlier stream just so I could process it a little bit and it was on my mind during my entire drive up and I am going to get to that in this hour on the program. I, All right, we are back. It is Monday, April 1st. Can you believe it already? 2024. My name is Brian Craig. You are listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show on the radio since 1977. And I'm here to tell you, we have a lot to discuss on today's program. In fact, the, I did a, uh, a live stream before I left my house this morning, I did all my show prep, and I was done a little early, and I sat down on my couch and was having coffee, and I came across something, and, it's, it, and I wasn't sure I should share it on the air. And I, uh, I did a live stream. I got in my car, and I'm in the driveway of my house. I think, should I talk about this thing should I share this on the on the on the show this morning and I wasn't sure and as opposed to just talking to myself I did a live stream on YouTube from my driveway in the car and uh, talked to the YouTube audience about it and I've been thinking about it uh, all the way up here to the radio st station this morning and I am going to get into this and it, it's one of those things I it's the kind of thing I would not normally do or discuss in this kind of way, but the way things are going right now, it's something that's got to be done. I'm going to get to that, uh, start to get to it after the first break, and it it does involve this bizarre, twisted event that Biden had at the White House yesterday. I will tell you that, um, and we're going to get into that a little later in this hour, all right? And uh, when, I, when I get to it, it, there's a piece of audio that I'll play. I'm going to go through what happened for people that weren't following the news over the weekend. And then I'm going to share this audio with you and ask you if you agree with it or not. And that's coming up. And um, it's, it's something that's got to be discussed. Now, before we get to that, I want to start this morning. You know, um, th this this election is, uh, without question, the most important election that this country has had in the lifetime of anyone who's alive today, without question, and is certainly one of the most important elections throughout American history. And there, any time there's an election, a presidential election. They talk about the independent voters and the importance of the undecided independent voters. And both political parties spend a whole bunch of their time trying to woo undecided independent voters. Now, I've come to realize, mostly this year, the undecided voters that you always hear about, that the press is always talking to, the politicians are always reaching out to... What I realized is these are just narcissists. They are hardcore narcissists, and they just love everything being about them and people begging them for their vote and begging them for their support. But this election really is not about the undecided. I, I don't think there's enough undecided people out there uh, with what's going on in this country today. And what the Democrats find themselves in is in a position not to go after the undecided voters. What the Democrats are trying to do is get the Democrat voters to support and vote for them. And this very messed up White House that we have that's run by 80 different people has just been doing stupid move after stupid move. And it's gotten really, I mean, the border, 
taking a position in, in favor of crime, this thing they did at the White House yesterday, having a fundraiser while there's a funeral going on for a police officer down the street who was killed in the line of duty. Um, I mean, it, the list goes on and on and on. It's just stupid move after stupid move. And what's happened with the Democrats is they, the Democrats that are in power, they've alienated their base. And really what they're going after, or they have to, or, or I don't know if they're aware enough to go after them, but who they really need to go after are not these narcissistic, independent, undecided voters. They, got, they really got to go after the Democrat voter base and try to get the Democrat voter base to vote Democrat. But I don't think they can do it. And uh, I'm going to play this clip. This is not the one I was talking about that I'm not sure if I should have played. That is something entirely different that I'm going to get to in this hour. But this clip here, um, it's Michael Rappaport. And Michael Rappaport, he used to act. I, I mean, I, I remember him in one or two things. I haven't seen him in anything in a long time. When's the last time he's been in something that any of you have seen? But Michael Rappaport is one of the most vile anti-Trump people out there. Doesn't get worse than this guy. You know, I mean, he's, he's like Kathy, Kathy Griffin towards Trump. He, he, you know, and now Michael Rappaport has been red-pilled for many, many reasons. The violence in New York, the attacks on cops in New York, and also the Democrat support of the terrorist against Israel. And... This, I'm going to play this audio. It has bleeps in it. I added the bleeps. Michael Rappaport did an interview, and he didn't use as much profanity as he normally uses, but uh, he uses some. I think I got all the bleeps. I did this editing at around 3 a.m. this morning, so Mike, listen closely. If I missed anything, I, I'm listening closely. I don't think I missed anything. Uh, just tap on the glass if I don't catch it, and we'll pause it and hit the dump button and wait for the delay to build back up. But I'm pretty sure I bleeped out all of the profanity. And uh, and when, when you've got someone like Michael Rappaport who is supporting Trump, who's going to vote for Trump and not Biden, they're in trouble. And, and I don't want to hear about these Michelle Obama fantasies. There was a poll out over the weekend um, She's, she's not even a player. Nobody likes her, okay? So that's not even a player. I'm going to play this before the break. So this is Michael Rappaport. He did an interview, and he's been red-pilled, and he's very specific about it. Here we go. Oh, hold on. Hold on a second. Honesty, I have educated myself so much since 2016, and I have a ways to go. My political views have changed immensely, and they're changing at a rapid pace. I will not vote for Joe Biden. I do not support anybody from the squad. I think they're totally full of shit. I think they're dangerous. I think they're race hustlers. I think they're cons. I think inevitably they want to get themselves uh, production deals to produce documentaries. I think they're, um, they're three card Monty playing bull artists. I think they totally have an agenda. Um, I have said, you know, not to go down the rabbit hole, that at this point when we're doing this interview, voting for Trump is on the table. People are like, what are you talking about? That's my reality. That is my reality. I will not support anybody who's anti-Israel. I will not support anybody that is anti, uh, um, you know, making America safe. I'm not supporting anybody that is cool with the fact that it takes me two and a half hours to get back into America from Toronto uh, at the, um, what the, what is it called, the passport at the... Um, passport control. The line to go from Toronto to New York, it takes me two and a half hours, as it should, but it takes you two minutes to cross the border. I'm not down with that <laughs> I'm not down with police officers in the greatest city on earth getting beaten up, and uh, you're a legal immigrant, and then you have no bail. I'm not uh, down I'm with... I'm flipping off the camera. Flipping off the camera like Tupac when he got arrested and he was coming out in the in the in the red Detroit what Red Wings t-shirt. Oh, I'm not down with going into a Costco or a 7-Eleven or a Rite Aid as I videotaped once and went crazy viral, cleaning out the spot 
and walking like you're, you're uh, you know, like a beautiful spring day walk. I'm not dealing with any of that. So any of these people that support it, I'm not, I'm not voting for them. Okay, Michael Rappaport. So Michael Rappaport, he's even tapered down his profanity. There's some profanity there, but that's like a tenth of what you would normally get from Michael Rappaport in a clip that, that length. And when, when the Democrats not only have lost Michael Rappaport, but Michael Rappaport's saying he's going to vote for Trump. I know he said it's on the table. He didn't just say, he, he, listen, he, it's hard. For, what he's doing is very difficult. He's going to vote for Trump. When they've lost Michael Rappaport, it's over for them. That's how bad it is. Now, we're going to take a break. I want to hear your thoughts on that, and I'll start to get into this other thing that I've been referencing this morning. one 465 2631 is our number. It's a toll-free call, no matter where you are calling from, 888-465-2631. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. Back after this. Don't sit on the sidelines. All right, so I'm Okay, let's get everything queued up. I mean, that's um, that's pretty powerful. When you have someone at that level of Democrat delusion, totally wicked. It's not a tease. I, it, I, I, it was almost like that, that stream earlier wasn't a tease. It was more like therapy for me. I wanted to talk out loud about what I was thinking to decide what I'm going to do, and I decided, so I'm going, to, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to start to get to it now after the break. It involves this transgender thing. Okay. find the original article here that I had over the weekend on it with the updates. for the original article. I don't need the original article, but the original article was pretty good. All right. Welcome back, one and all. I'm Brian. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. Call us on hold. Stand by. Our number is toll-free, 1-888-465-2631, 888 465 
2631. You know, uh, my pillow has massive specials going on right now on all of their mattress toppers. There's three of them. Uh, there's the two inch mattress topper, there's the three inch mattress topper, and then there's the my uh, mattress topper 2.0. The 2.0 is a three inch mattress topper with the cooling technology, and I sleep on that every night. I have slept on all three of these mattress toppers, and they are life changers. I don't get a lot of sleep. I got a crazy schedule. I don't sleep a lot. But that sleep that I get is, is incredibly well-rested sleep. Not one moment of my sleep is wasted sleep because, you know, I live in a MyPillow home. And the MyPillow mattress toppers, that's, that's the most dramatic of all the MyPillow products. I have the two-inch mattress topper on my guest bed. I've slept on it a couple of nights. It is spectacular. The three-inch mattress topper 2.0 with the temperature regulating technology, it keeps your body, the perfect temperature all year long. And, you know, I had it during the winter. I've had it on hot days, and it's just spectacular. Huge savings. And, of course, free shipping on orders over $75 at MyPillow.com. So you get free shipping with these mattress toppers with our promo code Kane at checkout. And you can also order by phone. You go to MyPillow.com and use our promo code Kane at checkout. You get the the incredible deals uh, site-wide, but these huge deals on the MyPillow mattress toppers, they make great gifts too. And again, free shipping on orders over $75 with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. You can also order by phone, 1-800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879, promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. All right, if you're on hold, stand by. I'm gonna start to get into this. Um, this transgender day of visibility on Easter Sunday that took place at the White House yesterday. I, you know, throughout, I did a, um, there's been an, a couple of updates on this. And the thing that I'm going to share in just a bit involves this, okay? And this is the thing I really had to think about sharing. But this transgender day of visibility on Easter Sunday, Easter is the biggest holiday of the uh, in, for Christianity okay I know people that aren't Christians think it's it's Christmas no it's it's Easter because that's Resurrection Day and there's been a major backlash from people in this country against this transgender day of visibility on Easter Sunday and out of every day of the year to do this on Easter Sunday was a direct attack on Christianity. The majority of people in the United States are Christian, okay? That's a fact. Not everybody, but the majority are. And this is a Christian nation founded on Christian principles. And this transgender day of visibility on Easter Sunday is not a coincidence. You know, there are sometimes things can happen that are stupid and destructive, but it you know, I, I give you, but it, it, it's something that just happened and nobody planned it. I give you an example. This idiotic fundraiser that Biden had with Obama and Clinton with Lizzo the day of the funeral of the New York cop in New York City. That was insane. And that, that fundraiser turned people against Biden like, like nothing has that were on his side, like Michael Rappaport. But that was something... It should have been canceled. That, I'm sure, because there were two presidents involved, Lizzo was there, I'm sure this is something that was planned months ago. They didn't know that one of their constituents was going to murder an NYPD officer on, on that Monday. But they, they should have canceled it, but they didn't. That was stupid. But it was, it was, not, it was not scheduled targeting the, the funeral. It was scheduled long ago. It happened to fall on the funeral. They should have canceled it. But they didn't. That was stupid. This transgender day of visibility on Easter Sunday is not an accident. This was done by design. You know, on Friday we were talking, the White House announced that children of military families invited to the White House for Easter, for the Easter egg roll, will not be permitted to put uh, religious messages on the uh, eggs. That was Friday. And then Saturday, this transgender day of visibility came out. They chose Easter to do this, and for lack of a, a, a more sophisticated phrase, it was an F.U. to Christians. 
That's it. An F you to Christians. It, it, it was nothing short of that. An F you to Christians. Um, I would say, and, and I noticed yesterday, there um, a lot of people, you know, Easter is also Resurrection Day. Very few people refer to Easter as Resurrection Day. Some do, maybe you do, but most people just call it Easter. And I noticed yesterday more people than I've ever heard in my life refer to Easter as Resurrection Day. We all know it's Resurrection Day, but it's commonly called Easter in this country. But I heard more people refer to it as Resurrection Day than I've ever heard in my life. And I think a lot of that was in response to this transgender day of visibility that they tried to hijack Easter with yesterday. And they targeted Easter, the holiest day for Christians, Resurrection Day Easter. And, you know, um, it is the equivalent, I, it, this just, and I'll throw this out to you, to agree or disagree with at one 465 2631. It's our call-in number, and it's toll-free no matter where you're listening to us. one 465 2631 For Joe Biden to do what he did yesterday, Transgender Visibility Day on Easter Sunday, is the, in, in my opinion, is the equivalent to having a bonfire in front of the White House burning stacks of Bibles. And I'm talking about a big old Bible bonfire. I mean, it is that offensive. It's that outrageous. Because this is not like the fundraiser, something that just happened to fall on this, this day. They looked ahead and said, let's do this. Let's stick it to those Christians. We're going to do this on Easter. You know, so Christianity was targeted with that yesterday. And it's one thing when you have these wackadoodle Rachel Levine types in Jean-Pierre's that are involved in that, but there's no adults over there at the White House who would, even though they support this stupidity, would say, you know, I agree with it all, but Easter Sunday, that's a big day for Christians. We shouldn't do it that day. It's too offensive. But there's nobody over there that thought that way. I mean, this is pure evil. This is one of the most offensive, if not the most offensive attack on Christians in the United States that I have ever seen. This transgender day on Easter. Um, it's sick. It's twisted. But Christians were targeted. In fact, I would go so far as to say that it's a hate crime. Now, of course, the left spent the, the, the second half of last week attacking President Trump for promoting that Lee Greenwood Bible. And then they do this. So the press may not report it like I'm talking about it right now because they're so, so sick and twisted themselves they don't understand. If you're on hold, stand by. And when we get back, I'm going to play this audio that I was weathering whether or not I should play, and then I'm going to take your calls. All right? Our number is toll free 1 888 465 2631. 888 465 2631. It's Monday, April 1st, and this is no April Fools. You know, we don't do April Fools around here. Uh, there's, there's serious business to discuss. We'll be right back. No, if you're new to my channel, subscribe. And um, everyone who's already subbed, please like the video because that helps grow the channel. But this is just, um, you know, I was thinking yesterday that, that I, I probably wouldn't talk about this too much. I did a, a live stream about this on Saturday, and I, it's got to be discussed. It's just got to be discussed. It's just too bad. What they did is just too bad.
It's one of those things, guys. That's bad. We'll be back shortly, guys. We'll be back right after this. This is the last commercial. Ten seconds. Two 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 six six four two. That's seven five four two 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 six six four two. Now back to the Steve Payne Show with Brian Craig, celebrating forty-seven years on the air. All right, we're back. I'm Brian. 
Okay, so Transgender Day of Visibility at the White House on Easter Sunday. Biden released a statement. Extremist. That's you guys, right? You, you uh, Christians out there. Uh, Biden released this statement uh, uh, in honor of Transgender Day of Visibility. Extremists are proposing hundreds of hateful laws that target and terrify transgender kids and their families, silencing teachers, banning books, even threatening parents, doctors, and nurses with prison for helping parents get care for their children. At the same time, Biden went on to say an epidemic of violence against transgender women and girls, especially women and girls of color, continues to take many lives. These attacks are un-American. First off, none of this is true, what, what he said in his statement. Um, I'm going to take your calls, and then I'll, I'll share my thoughts on this and get into um, some of the audio. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Renee. Hey, Renee. New York. Hey, Renee. Um, you know, this really is upsetting, and I think that his main goal is to force a reaction. He's been trying stuff to, pen, you know, the, the migrants against the black community, the black against the white, and I also think, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Deagle site, they they kind of took it down, but they... Mm. No, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about things like that, but this is, this is, this is the thing. OK, it it's uh, it's I don't think it's what you you said. These it's just this is who's running the country. Weirdos and 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 radicals and this and and the left have been against Christians for as long as I've been around. They're always fighting against Christians. They created that fake uh, separation of church and state, which does not exist, et cetera, et cetera. And they, you know, Marxists, President Trump calls them Marxist. Marxists run religion out of their countries. And that's what this is a part of. They're trying to, look at how successful they've been with younger, you know, millennials and younger, like younger people like Candace Owens. They've turned them into uh, anti-Israeli activists. They don't even know it. You know, they've been very, you know, they've been very successful in brainwashing. And this transgender day of uh, whatever this is, Visibility on Easter Sunday, without question, is the biggest attack on Christianity I can think of in this country's history. It is. And it's, um, I don't know if Joe believes in God because I just don't know how he could do something like that, you know, if he truly believes. It's just, um... Oh, yeah. You know, his God is money. Everything he does is for money. Selling out the country and everything else, it's all for money. Starting a war in Ukraine with Russia, it's all for money. Yeah, it really is, and it's, it's so frustrating because we don't know what to do. We, we, we feel like the same thing may happen this fall. No, that's not going to happen. What you do is you support Trump and follow his lead. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Brian. It's Ben. Hey, Ben. So, yeah, I think the last call is exactly right. This was a direct provocation in order Christians, because it's the mm. same thing after the copies in the high school. Yeah. Uh, that, like, two days after, they started talking about the issues that trans people are facing, even though it's in the in the wake. Like, the, the bodies weren't even cold before they went on about how trans people were the real victims. Mm -hmm. So, it, it absolutely is true. And uh, Well, the thing is, the people, the people that are living this lifestyle, like Rachel Levine, are senior people in government right now. So when, when those kind of things happen, they, they uh, as liberals, everything's about them, they turn it into them. You, know, you understand what I mean? They, they see, well, you know what I mean. It, come on, we don't have to play word games. They're, they're radical lunatics. Eh, I don't know. They're, they're radical lunatics. And when they see, uh, you know, the transgender shooter in Nashville, for example, they, they see the shooter is the victim in that instance. They were driven to this. You know, that's how they, they view this. I know, and this is all tactics. I don't know if you've ever heard of the, I think you have, you've mentioned, uh, it's uh, Saul Linsky's role for radical mm -hmm. trouble. I mean, this is how they look. This is this is why I don't, like, this is one of many reasons Biden is running the White House, is because they're running a playbook that Biden has never run in his career. Mm -hmm. they're, they're running the rules for radical playbook, and they're using tactics, such as the one they used on Good Friday and Easter, to, and, which is like, 
totally out of the norm for yeah. um, throughout his career. So, I mean, it's, it's it's absolutely disgusting. He's not a Catholic. He he constantly tells Trump he panders to people, but really, in fact, Biden panders to Catholics when no true Catholic would ever do what he did. I mean, he's a complete scumbag. And I, don't, I, I can't believe Yeah, I mean, and there's, there's no question they targeted Easter with this. This was not an accident. I mean, this is, this is, if you look at it, this is a pattern that's been building up for weeks now. They're trying to make, create this narrative. They're trying to create this reflective environment where they're drumming up hatred and using the term Christian nationalist. They, yeah. Well, uh, Rob Reiner came out with that, like, crackpot documentary about Christian nationalism. They're producing more articles about it. This, and this whole thing of Christian nationalism is, is a myth. It's it's a it's a it, it's a total fabrication. Yes, it's the boogeyman. It's Kaiser Sose. It's yeah. It's it's a it's a made up fantasy that they've come up with. But this this, this is the game they play. They did this exactly after um, with Black Lives Matter. They create a pseudo reality, which they keep drumming into the heads of people again and again and again. And then eventually, there's an event which they like George Floyd. Which they then try to use to move the ball down the field. Listen, they, and what they and what they do to back up this this lie. Most Americans are Christians, and that doesn't mean they go to church, but they're Christians, okay? And since most Americans are Christians, that it's uh, most of those uh, MAGA hat people like me were Christians, so they're like, look, Christian nationalism. <laughs> They want to make America great again. There's no, there's no such thing as Christian nationalism. They're creating this new myth that's a Nazi yeah. mo uh, uh, movement that doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. So I want you to pay attention to that because they're all going to ratchet it up in the coming weeks. This is, a, this is one of their main strategies. They're going to hammer abortion and they're going to hammer Christian nationalism. All the Democratic uh, strategists have been talking about how this is the playbook they're going to run. So as things keep going, and that's why it's important to know that this was a provocation, because they want people to react in order to feed and enlarge the narrative. So it is going to come. They're going to keep doing this. They're going to keep provoking. I just want your listeners to know that. But this, they plan on running this place just in the same way they did this with Black Lives Matter, where they tried to stoke animus between the races. They're going to try to stoke animus between everyone versus Christian, and then they're going to tie that to Trump. Yeah. They're going to use that to try to uh, say, look, you don't want to vote for this guy. He's a white supremacist, Christian nationalist, yada, yada, yada. So that, I just, I mean, it's clear as day that, and this is why, this is straight out of rules for radicals. It, it's uncanny. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that video that the woman made of the FBI agents at her house about her social media post? Um, I it, but I don't know. No, no, if you've seen it, you would have known about it. All right, appreciate the call. I wanted to, if anybody's seen that video, I'd like to talk to you about that, too. All right, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Edward Trump, Steve, in Martin County. Yes. And I'm Upper Brian. What you did this morning was absolutely despicable, because what you did not tell your listeners about the Transgender Day, Transgender Day occurs every year on March 31st. Mm-hmm. Unlike, unlike Easter Sunday, which varies year to year, whatever the last Sunday of the month is. But, so for you to say that, you know, the transgender people or the White House targeted Christianity, that's absurd. Okay, slow down. Slow down. Slow, say, ex ex excuse, excuse me. I know you're a liberal. You'll deny that. But have some decency. Here. We'll, we'll talk. Um, first off, uh, now I'm not censoring anything. Yes, this is something they do. But they targeted Easter, and we saw this because uh, last week they sent out a message to military fa Military families are invited to the Easter egg thing at the White House every Easter. And the White House sent out an order to military, an order, because if it comes from the White House to military families, it's, it's, a, it's an order. The White House sent out an order that military parents were to tell their children no religious messages on the eggs. And that was a build-up to this. See, what a decent moral person would do is understand uh, I, what, what, this, what this says on Easter Sunday, and you would schedule it for another Sunday in the year if you were obsessed with doing it. This was a target on Christians. I'll give you an example. Um, about 10 or 15 years ago, there was this strange preacher who wanted to burn Korans in front of a mosque in New York near Ground Zero. Remember that? 
I was against that because it was such an outrageous thing to do that you're, you're inciting something by doing that. What, what the White House did yesterday was a, a direct attack on Christians. It was a, offensive and an attempt to incite Christians. You're th- what, what, you, what you incited by leaving... A- I didn't incite, excuse me, I didn't incite anything. You, well, the calls come in, you know, a certain way because of what you... Let- what are you talking about? Well, excuse me. I take calls screenless, and anybody is welcome to call me out on the carpet like you're doing right now. Easter Sunday to have transgenderness. You we schedule it. No, excuse me. When it when you see on the calendar, uh oh, this outrageously offensive thing. First, they they're happy it was on Easter. You reschedule it for another day. You don't do something. Of course, I I can say whatever I want. It's still America. Okay. Oh oh okay great oh great oh great oh yeah I can tell he's all excited. We'll be back. After the break, I'm going to play this audio. To do it on Easter was not a coincidence. There's one opening on the board. All right, there's only one opening on the board. My name's Brian. If you're on hold, stand by. I'm going to play the audio that I was wondering if I should play or not in just a moment. I first want to tell you the $25 extravaganza continues at MyPillow.com. On, and it's 25 bucks for some of my favorite MyPillow products and many others. And I, I need to order some of these. The MyPillow six-piece towel set that I dry off with every day when I get out of the shower, just 25 bucks. You know... The regular price is ninety nine ninety eight, which I paid for mine. Just twenty five bucks for the six piece My Pillow towel set. They got some new co- colors too, with our promo code Kane at checkout. The My Pillow pet beds twenty five bucks for the My Pillow pet beds. Completely one hundred percent machine washable. You just throw the whole bed 
in the wash. You know, inside the pet bed, it has that patented fill from the pillows. Now, here's something I don't have. I'm going to tell my wife to order these for me. Uh, the My Pillow uh, sandals, 25 bucks. I could probably use a pair of sandals for uh, our beach party on the cruise and one of the islands we're going to. And there's many others. Uh, the Giza pillows, 25 bucks. I have these pillows. They're spectacular. They're a luxury My Pillow. And the cover has uh, that Giza cotton on it. They're normally 70 bucks, just 25 bucks. $25 for the My Pillow beach towels uh, and, and a whole bunch more. So go to MyPillow.com. You can use uh, our promo code Kane at checkout site wide, but the $25 extravaganza continues and free uh, free shipping on orders over $75 with our promo code Kane at checkout. K A N E. All right. Now, here, I'm going to play this audio. Let me just say, and then I'll go back to the phones. This is what I was talking about. I wasn't sure if I should play this or not. And I'm going to play it. And um, this morning, what I came across this by accident. This was not part of my show prep. <laughs> This morning, I finished my show prep early, and then I made a cup of coffee. I sat on my couch, and what I was going to do was start to watch the news uh, to see if I missed anything, you know, and things like that. And, and instead, I started watching um, something that popped up on my screen that is a, a priest. Yes, a Catholic priest. I don't have to say Catholic. It's like saying Jewish rabbi. If I say priest, it's Catholic. If I say rabbi, you can assume he's a Jew. <laughs> I love when people say Jewish rabbi. It cracks me up. Aren't all rabbis Jewish? This is a priest, and um, he had a vision. Now, this, this was not um, in response to the transgender day yesterday of visibility at the White House. This is something he said uh, sometime before, okay, about six, seven, eight months ago, all right? Uh, this is a priest. He's talking to the uh, he's talking to the flock. Listen. Now I'm going to share with you something that I don't say to most groups. This is kind of a, a shocker, and I don't think you're going to be afraid. The Lord brought me one day, prophetically in my spirit, to the Antichrist. So I won't go into any more details right now. I'm not allowed to. But I was brought to him. I mean like this, real. He looked at me, I looked at him. He's a world leader, alive right now. God brought him, me to him mysteriously in his office. He didn't know how I got there, nor did I, by the way. I was just as surprised as he was. <laughs> he's looking at me, I'm looking at him. He's... And as he's looking at me, and I'm watching him, two horns come out of his head. So I, I can't reveal his name right now, but you'll know soon enough. He looked at me and I looked at him, and he couldn't, he was con totally confused. He was like, trying to figure me out. Like, and he was like, almost scared. He's trying to figure me out. And I just calmly stood there and looked at him. I wasn't afraid at all. Because St. Paul says in your Bible that the man of the flesh cannot understand the man of the spirit, but the man of the spirit can see through the man of the flesh. Amen? Amen. You know it's true, don't you? So it was an amazing experience, to be honest with you. The only reason I mention that to you is this. The only reason is this. We are in the battle. If you know it's starting, don't you? We're in the battle. It's huge. It's huge. And when little boys want to become little girls, and little girls want to become little boys and mutilate their bodies, you know something perverse from hell is reigning. Amen? Amen. That's just the tip of the iceberg, what's really happening. Abortion is part of this. Abortion has been feeding this fire of the Antichrist all these years. The abortion. It's like a sacrifice to Satan. Okay. So this priest, this is about seven or eight months ago, and I, this just popped up on my computer today. I was watching things before the show, and he says the Antichrist is in office right now. He specifically talked about this transgender thing, and then he mentions abortion. And President Trump has overturning Roe v. Wade 
has taken that issue really away from the Democrats in so many ways. And this transgender thing is their new abortion. But I'd like to ask you do, you, do you believe this priest and do you think he's right? All right, let's take some calls. Our number one 465 2631 You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Rabbi Doctor. Hey, Rabbi. A Jewish rabbi. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that joke. I know. It's, it's true. I, how, many, how many times have you heard people say Jewish rabbi? I hear, I've heard that my whole life. The time. Yeah. The time. So I want to wish all of your beautiful, wonderful callers a happy holiday. I hope they had a wonderful Easter. It's an amazing holiday. We have an amazing country based on our, together, our Judeo-Christian values, and uh, I pray for us all. Mm-hmm. I also want to add that your topic of the show is very interesting to me personally. I'm a trained doctor, and my area of expertise is mental illness. And in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, we're up to version 5.0. Interestingly enough, up until 5.0, first versions 1 through 4, all had transgender listed as a mental illness. That is true. Gender dysphoria, Mm -hmm. referred to. It's been removed, however, in this last version, and now it's considered a lifestyle, something that is a normal, everyday uh, occurrence. So the Torah, the Bible, forbids a man to act or dress or change to a woman, or a woman to change or act or dress. I've left the profession because I'm so transfixed with this movement to reject our values, our theoretical underpinnings, which created this great nation. James Madison. Which I- well, let's let's be more. Let's just let's try to get back on topic, Rabbi. You know this this transgender day of remembrance at the White House. You know, uh, I don't care if they do this every year. They targeted Christianity yesterday. That was an attack, a hate crime attack on Christianity yesterday. It certainly was, and uh, as the world gets uh, darker and darker, the ray of light continues to shine, and callers that you receive, you for an example, are able to expose this, and I always use this great metaphor that I was taught by the leader of our Chabad Lubavitch sect, our, the last prophet we refer to him as Menachem Mendel Shnirshan, the Rebbe, he said that if you go into giant stadium, and you are in the middle of the night walking into the room, uh, the main stadium that is the, the floor, the, the foundation, and all the lights are off. And one person in the center of the stadium lights one match. Every single seat in the stadium will see that light. Light over darkness always wins. Mm-hmm. This is what you're spreading. So this light that you're enabling, the vision that you have to come back to our values, to say enough is enough, to push back. This cancel culture has created such an environment yes. where we're not it's allowed to speak up. Right. The university, for example, I work with, I am not allowed to speak up. I'm told that diversity of thought and opinion is accepted, except if it goes against our view. Exactly. There, that, that's right. All right, Rabbi, i got to run. Thank you for the call. Um, call is on hold. Stand by. We have less than a minute left till the top, so I don't have time to take another call and give you the time that you deserve. But if you hang in there, we're going to go right back to the phones after the top of the hour break. Um, th- this, this event yesterday, this transgender day of visibility on Easter Sunday at the White House, was a big move to wipe out from our society the tradition of the Easter egg roll and the celebration of Easter at the White House by these anti-Christian Marxist radicals that are running this country right now. We're going to continue to talk about this after the break. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977, celebrating 47 years on the radio. My name is Brian Craig. We have two openings on the board at one 465 2631 2631 We'll be back with your calls after this. WSF. It's outrageous. I, I, I uh, didn't.
plan on talking about this at all. I did a, um, a pretty good live stream on um, Saturday about this. Yeah, it's outrageous. The whole thing is just outrageous. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. I do. Would you join the military? Would you want your kid to join the military right now? We'll be back shortly, guys. That's our top of the hour break. Bill Clinton needs to buy Joe Biden depends. Maybe just Bill Clinton could loan him some of his depends. <clears throat> How about that? We'll be back in 45 seconds.
1977. It's the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. Today marks Transgender Day of Visibility. Each year on March 31st, we celebrate transgender Americans and all that they have accomplished. We honor the many contributions transgender Americans make in health, medicine, public service, and across our nation. At the Department of Health and Human Services, our mission is to improve the health and well-being of all Americans, including transgender Americans. From promoting access to high-quality care, to addressing health disparities, to developing policies that improve reproductive health care, to ensuring transgender youth have access to the 988 program counselors with professionals trained to work with them. Achieving health equity is our commitment, a commitment to all. On this Transgender Day of Visibility, we must continue to make focused and ongoing efforts to end inequities, eliminate the impacts of injustice, and improve access to care for everyone. Today of all days, I stand proud and visible with my fellow transgender Americans. Happy Transgender Day of Visibility. Oh my goodness. Okay, that is the Assistant Secretary of Health and Human Services of the United States, Rachel Levine. Happy Transgender Day of Visibility. Can't say Happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, but you can say that. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Tracy. Okay. Hey, Tracy. All right, Tracy. Uh, well, this, uh, this is response to uh, the caller before the Jewish rabbi. Mm. Um, the one, I think it's BS. I think this was deliberately orchestrated for it to land on Easter Sunday. Absolutely. And they, they say that um, this has always been when? When did this start? I heard uh, from what I saw, it was like 2022, 2023. But from no point was this ever always been a thing, right? It's an event that can happen any day of the week, any day of the year, okay? And uh, they, when, it, when they found out it was going to be on Easter this year, believe me, that's why they ordered the soldiers not to let their kids put religious messages on the eggs. But I believe that, right, so I believe that, what if, um, I mean, visibility, I, I can't unsee it if I try. They're all over. It's all. It's in your space. All mm. the store you go to. I, I can't. I can't take it. But what, what about April tenth? Why don't they make it on uh, April tenth? See what happens. You know what April tenth is? What's April tenth? Um. Well, we have a. It's a day off from school. Did you know that? Oh no. I. I. What's April tenth? Eid. 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 Oh, Ramadan. Ramadan. Oh, yeah. That, no, they would never do let it fall on Ramadan. Exactly. Well, I'd like to see that. <laughs> that would never happen. I just think that, yeah, exactly. And it, it was very deliberate. It was, it, not only was it deliber deliberate, the, I, can, I consider it to be a hate crime. They're in the hate crimes because they targeted, they targeted Christians with this. The, the, it, and and the, the other example I used, this is the equivalent is if they were burning a Bible, Bibles in a bonfire at the White House. I mean, anybody with a lick of sense understands how they they did this to offend Christians. Yeah, they they want to get a ride out of us, and mm -hmm. they want exactly. I believe you said it too. They want to have us mm -hmm. get all worked up and then cause a bigger problem. And no, we're not. Well, we're not going to fall into that trap. I appreciate the the call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, it's Cynthia from Morton County. Hey, Cynthia. You did a great job this morning, Brian. Thank you. Uh, just a little history. Back in 2007, Massachusetts had a bill. It started also with Mitt Romney for gay rights. It moved on. Let me just read a headline. What people have forgotten about the transgender battle? All the way back then. Massachusetts uh, resistance has groups all around the country fighting this. When you read and go in and read exactly why they did this, how they did this, um, about the medical part of it, um, really it is, and another thing, it is cultural Marxism, which is going on in our country right now. 
And people have to push back because whether you like it or not, they like it or not. There are only two genders, and it's male and female. And we have to keep remembering that. I have people in my family now who have transgendered. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're very unhappy. Once you do that, you can't undo it. So we're, we're told false lies. We're telling people, uh, look at this billboard on Calvin Klein ad with a man pregnant. That is a lie. And we should say it's a lie. Yeah. And so yeah. this administration started in 2007 in Massachusetts with a bill, okay? Uh, from then on, it started massresistance.com. On, you can look at Mitt Romney about it, and you can move forward and remember Obama. What did he do at the White House? He had the rainbow. Remember the rainbow in front of the White House? It all, I mean, it, 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 the dots are there. This is what's going on in our country. And people... You know, I, and, I, and I pointed out to that, uh, that, that liberal that calls from Martin County, you know, when, when that pastor 10 or 15 years ago wanted to burn Qurans um, at Ground Zero near a mosque at Ground Zero, I don't know why there's a mosque at Ground Zero, but there's one. Uh, it shouldn't be there. But anyway, he, was gonna he wanted to burn copies of the Quran there. And I was against that because the purpose of doing that is to incite a reaction, right? He was targeting, you know, the mosque shouldn't be at ground zero. It's an insult. It shouldn't be there. But, but anyway, burning the Qurans is not a good idea. I didn't support that because it's, in, it's inciting, it's targeting religion. This is that. This is that. But this is on a whole new level. That The guy that wanted to burn the Qurans was just a, a freaky preacher looking for attention. This is the upper levels of the executive branch of the government of the United States of America. Um, and, and, and for them to do this is, it's, it's sick. It's sad. I just want one more thing. Um, the gay community, my cousin's gay, he does not support any of this. He knows it's wrong. Okay? They've just pushed and pushed and pushed. And, and people who have, you know, we, we have a lot of um, uh, gay conservatives that we support. My cousin is one of them. Um, I don't ask him about his lifestyle. And he this isn't this isn't gay. Um, this isn't gay. This listen, listen, listen. You know, th this would be like saying, "Well, my friend who's divorced, he's against this." You know, th there's no equivalency between this and gay. I know they get kind of wrapped up in, into one another, and I understand why. But it's but it's th it isn't that. You know, listen, listen. The people that are running. The people that are running this country are evil. And I played that clip from the priest from Georgia talking about the Antichrist and all of this. He says the Antichrist is in office right now. And I always hear people talk about the end times and the Antichrist. Um, of course, we don't know until we know. But it, it, he's obviously talking about Joe Biden, that, that, that priest, with, what, with what's going on right now. And, you know, James Woods put out a list of all the gay and transgender events throughout the year. I'm going to go through some of it later. Um, last week was LGBTQIA Health Awareness Week. April 6th is International Asexuality Day. April 13th is the International Day of Pink Opposing Homophobia. April 14th is the Gay Day of Silence. April 26th is the Lesbian Visibility Day. And that's just through April. I got a whole year of events like this going on. Yes, and um, I was on a space call on X, and uh, there was a psychiatrist on there and said that he no longer belongs to the psychiatric, whatever it is, group they have, because of what's going on in that, in that uh, medical thing, that they're, you know, they're telling these people that this is okay. Yeah. They actually, I mean, listen, this is also a mental illness in so many ways. And you can go back and look at it. We have, uh, look at all the money they're making on, on medicine, <laughs> feeding this. You know, the drugs that are... It's a, it's a, you know, the doctors that promote this, you know, the abortion business is dried up. Most abortions are done with those over-the-counter pills. So the type of doctor that was working in abortion clinics, now they've moved into this. Absolutely, I agree 100%. All right. Okay, I got to run. If you're, if you're on hold, stand by. We'll be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in on the action. Call the Steve Kane Show live on air now. 888-GO-K-1. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, guys. And uh, those of you that are already sub, please like the video. Um, 
this is really um, it's a sad, sad thing we're dealing with here. It's really sad. I mean, I got this whole list of the different bizarre days that they've come up with. Those were just through April. I'll go through more of them later. I mean, there's so many. Might take me a whole segment to read through them. Just read the list. We'll be back shortly, guys. We'll be back in less than a minute. Fourteen seconds. To consider copper, gold, silver, battery metals, clean tech, biotech, and AI equities. Listen to Money Talk Radio South Florida with me, Ellis Martin. 9.30 a.m. weekdays here on your true oldie station. Now back to the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. Listen in the <coughs> Palm Beaches on 95.9 FM, the Treasure Coast on 106.9 FM, here is in Boca on 95.3 FM, Fort Lauderdale on 96.9 FM, and anywhere in the world at trueoldiesfla.com. Today on the Trans Day of Visibility, we celebrate the trans individuals in our communities and recognize their struggle, the struggles for recognition and increasingly survival in the face of unfathomable hate, hate which leads them to often feel unsafe or like they don't belong. We also celebrate the many contributions that they've made. We've had trans leaders at the forefront of progress in every field imaginable, from STEM to the arts to human rights advocacy to so much more. All across the country, we're seeing a rise, a rise in legal, political, and physical attacks on those in the trans community. And it's just appalling and unconscionable, this discrimination, and it's gone on for far too long. At the end of the day, everyone wants and deserves to be respected, connected, and protected. Our trans community deserves no less. So Jen and I wanted to add our voices uh, and our support to the millions of people celebrating today. For those of you in the trans community, whether you are out or not, we value you and we appreciate you. Okay, that was Governor Newscomb. Uh, and his wife out in California, uh, National Transgender Day of Visibility. But they told the Christians no religious imagery allowed. Christians have to be in the closet at the White House on Resurrection Day, Easter Sunday. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, good morning, Brian. This is Richie. Hey, Richie. You, you, just, you just heard total lies from Lucem and, and his wife. Uh, Levine, you heard total lies. There's no, there's no attack on these people going on. You know what the attack is? The attack is against people like you. Somebody who actually, see, Brian takes this, this personally, because Brian is a very religious person. Brian, will, I, I've listened to you a long time. This is bothering you inside. This isn't about the show today. This is actually bothering you personally. It's bothering a lot of people that believe 
These people, these people have totally tried to turn America against against Christians and Jews because they say that basically you believe in a fairy tale, and and they're the, they're the smart ones mm -hmm. to convert this country into a complete sewer. Mm -hmm. and, and let me tell you something that really bothered me more than you know that that thing in the White House was a disaster and it's and it's grotesque. And what they did yesterday, by, by the way, in 1956, the skyline of New York had, on three of the major buildings, had three crosses. Last night on Easter Sunday night, they had the rainbow flag up there on all those structures. The city was all in rainbow. Let me tell you something. It's not a lifestyle. And as for, as for you, I, I, this is something that really disturbed me. I, I guess you might have saw this. The mass, the most holy mass. In the St. Patrick's Cathedral yesterday, a cathedral which is, like, I listen, even if you're not... That was Saturday, that was Saturday night at St. Patrick's in New York. Palestinians, and by, and, and, uh, uh, by the way, Cardinal Dolan was there, um, and uh, Palestinians rushed the, the front of the church while the priests were doing Mass. And um, I, it, some of the news reports... Some of the news reports are calling them climate activists. No, they were supporting the Hamas terrorists yelling, Free Palestine. Uh, how, could you imagine how frightening that must have been for the people that were sitting there in that mass? It's, it's, it's not just frightening. It's total disrespect for religious people. They yeah, if we, if we had Christians who went into a mosque and did that, I'd be just as pissed. And, and, and that, that, that attack... Uh, at, at St. Patrick's on Saturday night by the Palestinian terrorists during the, the mass, the media really have downplayed that. I didn't find out about it till late in the day yesterday. No, it's kind of gross. I mean, the whole thing, the, the whole country is a, is a total disaster. This guy that called you up a couple of calls back that attacked you, okay? I got a, a message for him, okay? Listen, you have to be a, in total, you're, first of all, you're not, a, you're not an honest person. And I'm talking about that caller, because there is a definite, definite problem between religion and the gay community. There's a clash. It's always been a clash. Once they eliminate the church, they can run rampant throughout the country and turn kids and boys and the men, men and the women, all sorts of craziness. I mean, going to bathrooms when they're not supposed to be in bathrooms. Our morality is going through the toilet bowl here, and this guy's calling. You know, you're, you're causing a problem with your tone of yeah. topics. Yeah. Give me a break. Isn't well, what he was trying to do was what he was trying to do was bully me and accuse me of something. So I'll change the topic. That's what that guy was doing. But you know the thing the thing about it is yeah I don't want to try to confuse the gay with the transgender thing. What they're trying to do what they what they did was hateful and everything else very evil. They're trying to incite Christians to do something. And you got to be very careful. You want to be cool, calm, and collected, okay? And um, I have to disagree because Christians are not going to respond in that manner. Christians are very forgiving. Jews are forgiving. What do you think this, this anti, these marches in the street? Uh, and, and I'll tell you, these, these, um, these Muslim terrorist supporters that stormed at, at St. Patrick's Saturday during Mass, I mean, you know, they're... Uh, New York is was ground zero on 9-11. I mean, how dare they? How dare they? Well, have you ever heard of a Zionist? They call it Zionist. Like, that's a bad thing. Yeah, being, yeah, Zion, like being, yeah, yeah. Yeah, have you ever heard of a Zionist that wasn't Jewish? These people, are work, they play word games. That's all they do. And, and most of them, if you look at the marches, you got, you got, and this has got to be Marxism, you have a lot of very white faces in there. You have the rainbow flags marching with them. Those people would be thrown off of buildings in a, in a, in a damn country controlled by. Shit. Well, they got they got a bunch of useful idiots that they've put together to work to work towards. That listen, they've got all these groups together working to bring down the United States as we know it. That's it. Thank you very much. You hit it right on the head. This is a revolution. Mm hmm. Up. Mm hmm. Because this is this is to take us. I mean, what what if, if you know these 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 Muslim terrorist supporters at St. Patrick's? What was going through their mind to go up there during mass? If 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 we had Christians that if we had Christians that that behave that way during a religious service at an, at another religious event like the Ramadan thing that's going on now, if somebody did that at a mosque, I'd be so pissed off that they that they disrespected those Muslims at that mosque 
you know, under the guise of Christianity. They came down with the big banner, I think it said, Free Palestine. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it might have a sense of wild. Yeah, and the, uh, the poor security guards who had to get, it, it got violent at St. Patrick's Cathedral during Mass. I've never seen something like that. This is not supposed to be in a, in a, in a place of God, especially St. Patrick's Cathedral, which is, people, if you've never been to New York, I don't suggest you go anymore, but if you go, this is, this is like the Holy Grail. I mean, it's the yeah, I know. I, my wife and I, we, we didn't go to church. We couldn't go to church yesterday, but we watched Easter services uh, without even knowing about this at St. Patrick's with Cardinal Dolan yesterday. I mean, we want, you know, that's, you know, if uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral was here, that's where I'd be going to Mass every week. All right, Richie, thanks for the call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, good morning. How are you doing? This is Maria from Florida. Hey, Maria. Hey, how you doing? All right. I, I can I can feel I couldn't wait to get on this show. <laughs> I couldn't wait, boy. I have a word for anyone think that this was just some incident or this was just some um I ain't gonna say boy, I'll say mess. Let me tell you something. This what the White House did, it woke in a lot of people. Um, I was out there yesterday at church and I'm telling you we had a good time, but I can tell you this. That was the White House did. And the media is trying to portray as, oh, well, we always do this. No, 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 no. You don't do that. You don't mark God like that. You don't mark any Christian people like this. You don't take that day away from the Christian people, the Jews, the mad people. All this mess that's going on is a hot mess. That's right. Mess. And that's right. I'm sick and tired of them trying to use Christian people, trying to use, take God's name, take his name in vain like that. I don't even do that, and I'm a Christian. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Never use God's name in vain. But you took a very, very crucial moment that we had in this nation. We need that. We need that. The, the, White, the, the, the White House attacked Christians on the holiest day of the Christian calendar of the year. And it was not a coincidence, and they don't do this every year. They did it, and they were, and it was, it was it. Uh, they went out of their way to do it. They want, they wanted to do, they wanted to give us an fu. It was an fu to Christians yesterday. We're running the country now, you Christians. We're in charge now, Rachel Levine. Yes, yes. This was a hot mess. This was, this was a mess that I never ever would have. I have never seen a president of the United States use their power in this way and, 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 and attack the Christian people this way and then go try to go back out there and explain yourself. Mm. Mr. President, we don't want to hear what you got to say. We, mm -hmm. You are, and you are evil. You That's right. That's right. No, no, it's, it, is, it is evil. It is evil. This, and I don't say that lightly. I know people throw evil around. They throw Nazi around. They throw anti -Christ. I don't throw that stuff around too easily. This, of, this transgender day of visibility on Easter Sunday at the White House, after the kids were told no, no religious imagery, it is pure evil. Nothing short of it. Yes, yes, it, it was. And I, I'm so, I was so, uh, I would try not to let nobody, let my face show it or anything, but I was so upset and beat me. I just got out of the hospital Wednesday because I had to have a procedure done. Yep. No, I'm good. Sorry, but I'm good. But I was so upset. It, 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 it really hurt my heart to see something like that. And then, and the bad thing about it, I seen it coming Friday because I could hear, I could see yeah. the media talking crap about Good Friday, Good Friday. And I'm like, well, well, what are you talking about, Good Friday? Yeah, it's a holy week. What are you talking Yeah, about? yeah. Listen, I got, I got to run, but I, I appreciate the call. All right, take care. If you're on hold, stand by. Back after this. Making morning radio great again. I'll be back, guys. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. And everyone, please like the video. I'll be right back.
by Palm Beach Patio Furniture. Route 1 Seminole Plaza Shops, North Palm Beach. Palm Beach Patio Furniture. Voted in the best of the best patio store in Palm Beach County. PalmBeachPatioFurniture.com, where luxurious outdoor spaces are created. And now, a true oldies traffic check. Brought to you by the Palm Beach Kettle Club. Lake Green crash beyond 95 at the Turnpike North and South of Jupiter, Palm Beach, West Palm and Lake Worth. In Boca, crash in the Lino Rio at Local Resort Drive. This traffic update is sponsored by Jackson Hewitt. It matters, it does your taxes. Why are people saying, you yeah, to Jackson Hewitt? When you switch to Jackson Hewitt, they will beat what you paid last year on tax prep, even if you filed online. Proof of prior year payment required when filing new clients only at participating locations through April the 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. That's traffic. I'm Dory Don. Traffic, a service of the Palm Beach Kennel Club. It's showtime in the Paddock Restaurant at BBKC with actor and comedian Pauly Shore for two nights, April 19th and 20th. If you're on hold, hang in there. Phones are very busy today. It's bad. I mean, this is just, um, I, I'm trying to think of something, I, I'm talking about at this level, something at a presidential level that is equal to um, this, so far as an attack on Christianity, and I cannot think of one. Can you? By, by, the, by the presidential level. And I'm, I can't. Mm -mm. I can't think of anything at this level. I just this is the biggest attack ever on Christians by by the presidential level. No. Uh, and I've really racked my brain trying to think of an example and I cannot. It's pure evil. back in 12 seconds. Weissman Community Center on Atlantic Ave in Delray Beach. Come out, get fit, and get healthy. Learn more at Greater 
SouthFloridaChamber.com. Now, back to the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig, celebrating 47 years on the... All right, callers on hold, stand by. If you're just tuning in, let me recap. Yesterday at the White House, if you took a break from the news over the weekend, uh, they, uh, Biden had Transgender Day of Visibility on the holiest day of the year for Christians, Easter. We call it Resurrection Day. Um, Christians were ordered by the White House to not have any religious displays on Easter at the White House, but it was tra- they're not to be visible, but the transgenders were. Now, while uh, Joe Biden was hanging out with these transgender people, President Trump went to the funeral of Officer Diller, who was murdered by a Democrat in New York City a week ago today. And this clip, this audio, is the priest who married Officer Diller to his wife and was with the family when President Trump showed up at the funeral. And uh, the priest to Officer Diller's family gave a quick little interview. Listen. You were there when President Trump walked into the funeral home at yeah. the wake. What was, what was your interaction like? So it, it was really beautiful. Stephanie introduced me to, to the president uh, as uh, the priest that married them. Uh, and I was able to just say, uh, Mr., uh, Mr. President, thank you for being here. Thank you for your goodness to this family. Um, would you be willing to pray with us? And he said, of course, Father Duffy. And uh, I said, ladies and gentlemen, President Trump would like to pray with us. Let's all say an Our Father together. And the whole room, including the president standing right next to me, prayed an Our Father. And then I gave a blessing to everyone present uh, through the intercession of Our Lady of Sorrows. Um, and then the president so beautifully turned uh, and kissed baby Ryan on the forehead. And the baby clapped at the president. And, and it just broke the tension. Uh, it was just such a, a, a beautiful, human, uh, simple moment that meant so much to the family and so much to the people in that room. Wow. What a, what a difference, huh? You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Is that me? Yes, it's you. Okay, Rick from Deerfield. You know, the only thing that really upsets me is the fact that Trump is only going to have the years. And from either side <clears throat> of, the, of the aisle, there will never, never be another Trump. No. Even Trump. No. Never be a guy like this again. So he's changed the whole face of politics in the last eight years. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that's really upsetting me, is that he only has four years. Well, don't miss him yet. I mean, we, let's let's savor the time we have. I, you know, I know. So I want to say. Okay, I understand that. I know it sucks. I know. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Brian, and I'm calling from Traverse City, Michigan. All right, Brian in Michigan. What's up? Hey, listen. Uh, yesterday, you know. Uh, after a long break, everybody's got the sweets out. The White House comes out with their cookie cake with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris on top. Talking about the Transgender Appreciation or Awareness Day, you know, you got to consider the source. The guy can't even make it up a flight of stairs. The uh, border's wide open. The country is in shambles. And he's got Trump derangement syndrome. And... Two two points. I mean, obviously, they couldn't have picked a better day for the transgender movement. You know, Joe said he was going to have the mm. transparent uh, cabinet, and he obviously does. Mm-hmm. People who think that they're above God's work, and well, you give you, listen. You give too much credit to Biden being totally checked out. The open border, this thing yesterday, all the other problems. These aren't just happening. There are orders given to allow it to happen. They've been ordered to allow this to happen at the southern border. This, orga- this hate crime that occurred at the White House yesterday on the holiest day of the Christian calendar, Resurrection Day, Easter Sunday, these are all things that are done at, by orders, by direction. These are not accidents. I understand that, Brian. I know this one. And, 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 and Biden isn't as out of it as you think. You know, I, I, Brit Hume, when Obama was president, Brit Hume said that um, about Obama, because Obama was president then. And Brit Hume said once on Fox, he says, Obama uses race as a weapon or a sword, whichever is convenient at that particular time. And Biden 
uses his dementia as a weapon and a sword too. And sometimes he's medicated, sometimes he's not. And he's more with it than you think. The thing that Obama did most to really paralyze this country was in the 2013 National Defense Authority Act. He he revised the re, a revision. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Which allowed propaganda to be. I don't know. I I would say the worst thing. What what Ob Ob the two things. Listen, the two things that Obama did that are incredibly devastating, one is the education system and our public schools has been taken over by liberal teachers. So Obama did something to recruit these radicals to become public school teachers. The second thing he did was bring in an unknown large amount of Muslims into this country. And we see it on the college campuses. Yeah, with Dustin Hoffman, of course. It's kind of like what's happening right now. You know, something bad goes on, the media gets on their little wagon, gets America to move in a certain direction. It's all because... Yeah, but in Wang the Dog, there was no war. The war was an illusion. There was no real war going on. It was all CGI. There is, there is real stuff going on in Israel and in Ukraine. But, you know, the, 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 the people that are running this country today... I'm, try, I'm trying to rack my brain, and I've not been able to think of anything that any president has done to any religious group that's, as a, at, that's offensive even close to what Biden pulled yesterday at the White House. All right. Okay, I know, I know. Just remember, back in the movies, I know. Um, our number, one 465 2631. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Once. Hey, all right. We're talking about a Dustin Hoffman movie. Now we have Dustin on from Texas. Hey, Dustin, what's up? Hey, I just had someone's questions. So, did they do the trans anything less? I thought it mattered to excuse it. Well, apparently, uh, apparently it's become a tradition at the Biden White House to do this Transgender Visibility Day. However, this year they did it on Easter. It's the first time that's happened. Yeah, they should have rescheduled it. Like, bad, bad time. But they didn't want to reschedule it. If, someone, if somebody at the White House said, you know, we should reschedule this, they purposely did it on Easter. You have any class over there. It's not that. They're, it's, it's religious bigotry. It's hate. Look, look at the look, look at look at how the uh, left were acting this week when Trump did that promotion for that Bible that Lee Greenwood, the American Bible that Lee Greenwood's promoting. They spent a week attacking Christians and the left, and then this on on Easter Sunday. Oh yeah, they have they have no respect or love for Christians. That's obvious. So they hate us. Now the other question is with the egg thing. What if like a I don't even understand what you're talking about. Now, I want to tell you, it's, it's Monday, and maybe you're a little more active over the weekend, you know? Or maybe, you know, you went to church and you were kneeling down and your knees hurt. Or if you're in pain today, go see Dr. Appleton. You don't have to suffer. Talk to you about his laser way pain treatment. Walk-ins are welcome. Appointments are never necessary at Dr. Appleton's. And uh, Monday's a day when people wake up and they're aching and pain. And, you know, you don't have to be this way. I thought that aches and pains were part of growing old. It's not. Dr. Appleton rid me of my pain five times. His laser way pain treatment works on so many different types of pain. Uh, this list is an incomplete list, but it's some of the more common ones. Acute pain, chronic pain, herniated discs, rot rotary tears. Um, plantar fasciitis, fibromyalgia, spinal stenosis, sciatica, tinnitus, knee pain, neck pain, back injuries, post-surgical swelling, repetitive motion injuries, strains and sprains, work injuries, sports injuries, bursitis, and arthritis. That is an incomplete list. If you're in pain, Dr. Appleton can help. You know, the laser weight pain treatment is 100% painless. There are no injections, no drugs, no downtime, and no surgery. And it works. He's done it to me five times. Rid me of pain five times. Some pretty bad pains, too. Here's his number, 954-973-0710.
954-973-0710. Online, AppletonCairo.com. Give Dr. Appleton a call and say bye-bye to your pain. We'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, call us on hold, stand by. I'm Brian, it's the Steve Kane Show. Um, you know, Fannie Willis, one of the things she was ordered by the judge to do was stop talking about race. Well, over the weekend, Fannie Willis went out and started talking about race, and she told the judge to where to stick it. Listen. Hard out here always having to prove yourself two and three times. Recently, they tell me they don't like me to talk about race. Well, I'm gonna talk about it anyway. Truth is, it's some challenges that come to being black. And I see so much greatness in this city that has so many great African-American leaders. And I appreciate all of the sacrifice that you all have had to make to be in these positions. So, Chief Meadows, Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for having the intelligence to create an event like this where we recognize that you had to go through a little more to serve. Oh, my goodness. What, what issues are there being black today? And what is she talking about? Judge tells her not to talk about race. She says she's going to talk about it anyway. There are challenges to being black. What challenge is there today to be black? Seems like a benefit. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Brian from Deerfield. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. How are you today? All right. Uh, you know, Brian, anybody who didn't get a loud wake-up call from this administration, especially this president on Easter, and it's a very rude wake-up call, better better check to see what they're looking at. This We are in an all-out battle, uh, basically on, two, on a political battle and on a spiritual battle. I think the spiritual battle is actually much bigger than the, the political battle we're dealing with right now. But this guy, uh, he's an e-guy. He's not a good man. His, and we see the decisions he made. Were, were, they're, 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 this is his policy, and this is what he's all about, and this is what he wants. Mm -hmm. And anybody supporting this guy now after this Easter Sunday mm -hmm. debacle uh, really has to check their conscience and see what's going on here. You know, when there, there are things, and what they're going to do, you already heard it from the one liberal that called me today about this. Oh, they do this every year. It's every year. You know, that doesn't mean doing it on Easter is right. There, there are things that you don't do at certain times, okay, and because it's inappropriate. 
Uh, it's offensive. And when they found out that it was going to be on Easter this year, they started doing the high fives, I promise you. I mean, the message from the administration is, uh, is I mean, did you ever think you see this in this country? This administration has taken this country down so low. Fortunately, I'm a candidate on the other side that will bring this back up. But th this is just, uh, just... Let, let, look at the, you know, I got this list. James Woods, the actor. You guys know James Woods, great American actor. And he put out a list of all the days that they have, okay? And now, um, so I'm just going to start with the, yesterday, all right? So March 31st is Transgender Day of... This is all stuff done by the White House, okay? Under Biden. March 31st tra is trans uh, Transgender Day of Visibility. That's what we had yesterday on Easter Sunday. April 6th, April 6th right around the corner, is International Asexuality Day. April 13th is the International Day of Pink, uh, a day to oppose homophobia. April, 24, uh, April 14th, excuse me, is the Gay Day of Silence. April 26th is Lesbian Visibility Day. May 17th is the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, and Transphobia. Uh, May 15th is A Gender Pride Day. May 22nd is Harvey Milk Day. May 25th is pansexual and I don't even know what that word is. Uh, pan, pan romantic awareness day. I don't know what that is. I'm not sure what pansexual is either. Uh, the entire month of June is gay pride month. Uh, June 23rd is Stonewall day. June 28th is international LGBTQ plus day. These are all days, official days by the White House. July 14th is In International Non-Binary People Day. January 16th is International Drag Day. September 16th through the 23rd is Bisexual Awareness Week. September 23rd is Celebrate Bisexuality Day. I'm not making this up, guys. This is all the days. Um, October, the entire month of October is LGBT History Month. October 8th is International Lesbian Day. October 11th is National Coming Out Day. October 17th through the 24th is Gender Fluid Visibility w Week. That means your gender changes by the minute or if you choose. Um, I know you're getting bored. We're almost done. Um, October 19th is a twofer. A twofer. October 19th is International Pronoun Day. And it's also Spirit Day to support the LGBTQ plus youth. October 23rd through the 29th is Asexual Awareness Week. October 26th is Intersex Awareness Day. The entire no month of November, this is all Biden, the entire month of November is Trans Awareness Month. November 5th is Transparent Day. November 8th is Intersex Day of Remembrance. I don't know what intersex is. Uh, November 13th through the 19th is Transgender Awareness Week. November 20th is Transgender Day of Remembrance. They take off for, for uh, December and January. February 19th through the 25th is Aromantic Spectrum Awareness Week. I have no idea what that is. And then March 21st through the 25th is LGBTQIA Plus Health Awareness Week. And then that takes us back to March 31st, Transgender Day of Visibility. So I'm not making that up. Um, those are all the things that Biden has done. Well, we can safely say that there's an agenda here. I, yeah, think? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, and, and it's, it got kicked off on Easter. It, yeah. It's just really a disgrace. We're still celebrating the, 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 the risen Jesus Christ, and this is all being hijacked with this stuff. Anybody goes to the polls, keep this in mind. What do you want? You want a traditional values that this country stood for, or do you want this new, uh, I don't even know what the heck you call it. It's so far gone off the left. But people, people please remember that when you go to vote. And you have the political side, you got the spiritual side here, too, and they're both incredible. Well, you know, you got to ask yourself, what, what's, why does Biden have all these days? Is he gay? Is he, has he got some tendencies we don't know about? I mean, what kind of man would have so many days celebrating? That it's like every day of the year there's something, except in the month of December and in January. They take December and January off. I'm not sure why, but they take that off. Um, 
the second term that we said they'll be hijacking Christmas too. Well, see, see, here's the thing. If God help us, and, and President Trump is not reelected in November, these, these lunatics that did this disgusting thing yesterday will take it as a mandate that their agenda is what the American people want, and it'll get worse. There's, there's no question we are in a huge spiritual battle. I mean, I agree with you, the, the, the Catholic priest who said that we are in a huge spiritual battle. We are in the end of days, and we're seeing it. It's just coming like a tidal wave. But this is such an, this is such an overplay of this position. Oh, um, you know, just, you know, there's there's things, you know, like like, for example, um, if there are there are things that you don't do because they're not appropriate on a certain day. If there is a uh, God forbid, a plane crash. OK, if a plane crash happens, I, I found out about this when that TWA flight got shot down years ago. Remember that? You know, OK, when the, when a, when there's a plane crash. In, at a radio station, you stop running air, air, you know, travel commercials for a couple days because because it's in bad taste. You understand what I mean? Um, you know, and and there's some things that are beyond bad taste and offensive. And doing this thing they did yesterday on Easter Sunday, the traditional Easter egg thing at the White House, they were targeting Christians. I consider it a hate crime. I consider it the equivalent as if Biden got around with Jill and Hunter and spent the day burning Bibles. It's the same thing that they did yesterday. They were burning Bibles at the White House yesterday by doing that, in my opinion. It's an in-your-face day, and it's like they, they've thrown down the gauntlet, and, uh, you know, we're, we're in the battle now. I'm curious what the polls will reflect the next set of polls will come well, you know, what I, I know, I was talking about this in the first hour. I noticed yesterday, you know, Easter, for those of you that don't know, that's the day, you know, the resurrection of Jesus is what Easter is. And I noticed a lot of people yesterday referring to Easter as Resurrection Day, which I not, I've really not heard too much before. And I think a lot of people were making a, a, a bigger deal about that because they were so offended at this Transgender Day of Visibility at the White House. You know? All right, pre pre appreciate the call. Yeah, yeah, all right, thank you for the call. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's where we are. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Michael Louisiana. Oh, hey, Mike, what's up? You know, this is a provocatory act, <coughs> all right? This is a provocatory act, and it's meant... What, what are you listening to in the background? What, 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 do you have on, what, what do you have on in the background there? That's not me. Turn it off. Why? Well, you're, you're, you're on hold with me and you're listening to something else? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do something on it. And, and, you know, it was playing already, but this is a provocatory act. Matthew 5, 38 and 39, uh, 39 says, turn the other cheek, right? They want us to not, to deem that we have no more cheeks to turn and provoke us in action. Yeah. That's what this is about. Well, it was what they're, yes, they're trying to trigger this. You know, so we were talking earlier that there's no such movement as Christian nationalism. The left have created this. It's totally made up. It does not exist. It's Kaiser Soze, Soze you know, from, from the movie. It does not exist. And they're trying to use this to get Christians to be outspoken and say, look, there's those Christian nationalists again. Uh, but there's, yeah, that's, you're exactly right, Mike. Thank you for the call, um, even though I find it offensive that you're listening to something else while you're on hold with me, but, eh, you know. Um, I want to tell you guys uh, at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane at checkout, of course, there's incredible specials. The mattress toppers, all of them are on special. They have a 2-inch mattress topper, the 3-inch mattress topper, and the mattress topper 2.0, which regulates your body temperature. I've slept on all three of these. I have the mattress topper 2.0. The 2.0, by the way, is a three-inch mattress topper, but they're all great. I have the 2.0 on my uh, the two-inch mattress topper on my guest bed. The my pillow mattress topper is life-changing. It will you will get the greatest night's sleep you've ever gotten in your life. You think you've had a good night's sleep? You haven't until you've slept on a my pillow mattress topper. Huge discounts on those, and it's free shipping on orders over seventy-five dollars with our promo code Kane at checkout at mypillow.com. You can also order by phone one eight hundred. 716-4879. Two hours down, one to go. We'll be right back. WSFS 104.3 HD3 Miramar. WIRK 103.7 FM. 
93.1 HD3 Indian Town and her in Broward on 96.9 FM, Boca Raton on 95.3 FM, West Palm Beach on 95.9 FM, and in Martin County on 106.9 FM. Programming paid for by Vic Canales Media Group. Your home for the Steve Kane Show. From the Palm Beach Patio Furniture Weather Center, where luxurious outdoor spaces are created, here's the oldies forecast. WPBS 25 First Morning Weather Center. This is meteorologist Brooke Silvery. Highs today once again in the... I'm Stephanie Diller, Jonathan's wife. I have not had the opportunity to speak before at this moment, so I would like to say on behalf of the entire <coughs> family, thank you all for the support this week. The outpouring of love our family has received has been overwhelming, and we're forever thankful <coughs> to everyone. With every hug that I've received, I just picture each one is from Jonathan. I wish Jonathan were here to see the incredible kindness and generosity that has been shown to our family. But I know in his own way, he is here watching over us. I am so proud that thousands of people across the country are calling Jonathan a hero. But the truth is, he has always been a hero to Ryan and me. The rest of the world is just catching up. Well, he was beyond proud to be a member of the NYPD, his career was only one of his many roles. I want to also honor Jonathan for who he was out of the uniform. I am not sure where to start, and I could probably talk about Jonathan for hours, so I'll start from the beginning. Jonathan was born and raised on Long Island, the son of Fran and Stephen Diller, and brother to Jennifer and Jason. He was the youngest of the three, which obviously means he was the mischievous one. But he also had the sweetest heart and the guiltiest conscience, so he would always smooth things over by making his mom handwritten apology letters. He grew up taking memorable ski trips with his family, playing lacrosse and hockey, and forming friendships that would last a lifetime. He was a connector, the kind of guy that would draw people in and could find something in common with everyone. A friend to everyone. Following graduating from St. Mary's High School, he attended SUNY Maritime, where he lived with his cousin Robert. He loved telling stories of traveling all over the world in the ship, seeing beautiful places, and making amazing memories. After graduation, Jonathan and I started dating after getting set up by our mutual friend, Evan. I remember on one of our very first dates, we went to see a movie. He was so tired from work that he fell asleep in the movie theater. He started snoring so loudly that the people around us asked me to wake him up. But of course, if you ever ask him the story, I'm the one who fell asleep, started snoring, and embarrassed him. It didn't take long for me to realize how special he was. He loved to make everyone laugh, and he had the most infectious personality. When you talked to him, he really listened, and he made me feel like I was the only person in the room. <coughs> Early on in our relationship, Jonathan's job required him to be away <coughs> for a month at a time. He was really proud of his work driving ships, and he made sure to send emails letting me know that he was always thinking of me. We must have exchanged over a hundred emails through the years that I will forever cherish. I would excitedly wake up to emails from him with hilarious subject lines such as, Jonathan Diller is a stud, and sweet messages It's sad. That is so sad.
We'll be back in 25 seconds. All right, the third hour has begun. It's Monday, April 1st, and sadly, all these topics we've been talking about the last two hours are not an April Fool's Day joke. They're the reality that we're living in. You're listening, of course, to Florida's longest-running radio show, The Steve Kane Show. I'm Brian Craig, Steve Kane, joining us. Hey, Steve. Oh, no, oh, hold on, wrong button. There. Oh, yeah, right. It's, ugh. Should we get the Joe Biden today? And I, it's... The only thing that strikes me, I mean, this is way beyond his capacity, his creativity to think. I mean, he's obviously involved in it. He obviously had, they had to get his approval. Uh, but I, I just, I mean, I can't cons Do you really think Joe Biden planned all this? Well, he didn't do the planning, but he signed off on it. And his, uh, and his, and his mob wife, uh, Jill Biden, did. They all signed off on it. Question of that. That's not even in question, but... I think that pretty well they can get it to go along with anything, man. And no, 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 no. No, I, this is different, Steve. This is different. You're giving you're giving him a break. You're giving him a break. We're talking about the uh, the. We're talking about the. No, no, no. You're giving him too much credit. The, we're talking about uh, on Easter Sunday, Joe Biden and the White House had Transgender Visibility Day. Um, you know, well, for people that didn't, I'm, I'm just doing a recap. And uh, the the. Um, the people in attendance were ordered by the White House because these are military families. So they're, you know, that these are orders. They were ordered not to show any signs or displays of Christianity on Easter Resurrection Day. On, they, they're not to be visible. The transgenders were. And this event, Steve, involves too many people, okay? Joe, Jill, and some people around them that are, you, you would think are with it, and they all approved of it, including Obama and uh, all the rest. So no, this uh, this didn't just happen yesterday. This was a direct attack, a targeted attack, a hate crime against Christians yesterday. What I believe. Well, I mean, you can believe that way, but uh, okay. I mean, it's just it's so. You're acting like it's an accident. No, 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 no. It's not an accident at all. It's a huge manipulation. I'm, I, I think I don't think Joe does much that he uh, innovates anymore. I think he's way beyond that. I think he's just a figurehead, really. Yeah, but Jill's not. And there are people around him that got some sense. Not <laughs> like, like this had to be, this had to be signed off by Jill Biden. It had to be signed off by Obama. It had to be signed off by Valerie Jarrett and all the rest. And, and the Democrat Party as a whole, because they were involved, the, the whole DNC were involved in this. So this isn't this isn't Rachel Levine and some rogue trans people. The whole the whole difference is in what you're saying. What I'm saying is the term signed off. I I believe that. I mean, I believe that the Biden signed off on everything, but I, it's just not his. He's never been that. He's never been this obviously hung up on the gay. Issue. I know they have trans people over all the time. I think Joe's turned. I, I think turns. Uh, it turns Joe on to tell you the truth. He's such a freak. He's you know he's taken his life and it is such extremes that it takes this to interest him. But they're they're in big trouble. And I started the I I started the show at six with this, but I want to play it again now. Um, what the Democrats are doing is they're in big trouble. They they've lost huge chunks of lifelong loyal Democrats. So this hate crime that was committed yesterday with the transgender, and it, make no mistake about it, Steve, I consider it the equivalent of they spent the day burning Bibles at the White House yesterday. I think it, it was that bad, and, I, and, and by the calls today, I'm not alone in that thinking. Yeah, yeah. Um, every day of the year, it's, there's, there's a gay thing going on, except December and January. But uh, it's probably too cold for the gays to come out in, you know, in December. But the thing about it, 
okay, uh, is they're losing lifelong Democrats and they're trying to gen up support among these. Let me play this clip. This is amazing. These bleeps, I've, all, I've added the bleeps. I played it earlier so everything was properly bleeped. Michael Rappaport, who hates Trump like n- no one else ever. I mean, he hates, he, he, he hates, not the, I don't think, you've, I don't know, the Beach interview? Okay. Really? Phil me did, yeah. I have no idea. I can't think of anything he's been in offhand. His big, his big Mm-mm. breakthrough film? Well, his breakthrough right now is he's been red-pilled and he's on the Trump train. So Michael Rappaport hates Trump more than Kathy Griffin, more than The View. I mean, he has been, you know, a, the biggest mouth Trump hater in vile, vile, vulgar ways for years. And he lives in New York uh, and he gave an interview, and this is a clip of it, on the beach. Listen. All honesty, I have educated myself so much since 2016 and I have a ways to go. My political views have changed immensely and they're changing at a rapid pace. I will not vote for Joe Biden. I do not support anybody from the squad. I think they're totally full of I think they're dangerous. I think they're race hustlers. I think they're cons. I think inevitably they want to get themselves uh, production deals to produce documentaries. I think they're they're three-card Monty playing bull artists. I think they totally have an agenda. Um, I have said, you know, I have to go down the rabbit hole that at this point when we're doing this interview, voting for Trump is on the table. People are like, what are you talking about? That's my reality. That is my reality. I will not support anybody who's anti-Israel. I will not support anybody that is uh, um, anti-you know, making America safe. I'm not supporting anybody that is cool with the fact that it takes me two and a half hours to get back into America from Toronto uh, at the um, what the, what's it called? The passport at the... Um, passport control. The line to go from Toronto to New York, it takes me two and a half hours, as it should, but it takes you two minutes to cross the border. I'm not down with that. I'm not down with police officers in the greatest city on earth getting beaten up, and uh, you're a legal immigrant, and then you have no bail. I'm not uh, down and with... Fli- and flipping off the camera. Flipping off the camera like Tupac when he got arrested and he was coming out in the in the... In the red Detroit what Red Wings t-shirt. Oh, I'm not down with going into a Costco or a 7-Eleven or a Rite Aid as I videotaped once and went crazy viral, cleaning out the spot and walking like you're you're on a you know like a beautiful spring day walk. I'm not down with any of that. So any of these people that support it, I'm not I'm not voting for them. Okay. So he says he's not voting for Biden. Trump he, he says voting for Trump is on the table. That means he's voting for Trump. I think the movie might be thinking it's Copland. He was in. He had. A, he was the killer in Copland that they were hiding in the water tower. Um, you remember that Harvey Keitel and De Niro and Stallone. But when they've lost, when when the when Biden and the Democrats have lost Michael Rappaport to Trump, that tells you how bad of a situation it is for him. I mean, that's it takes a lot. You know how hard it is for that guy to say that. That's not easy for Michael Rappaport, and he's been saying it a lot. You know. I mean, this is... In the light, there's no question. Michael Rapp... I would tell you how extreme this is. Michael Rappaport endorsing Trump, which is how I take that, would be the equivalent if Alec Baldwin came out and said he's voting for Trump. It's that radical of a, of a thing. It's true. It is, you know. So, so they're, they've lost their loyal, loyal base. So what are they doing? They're going after the terrorist supporters to vote for them. And they're going after these people they had at the White House yesterday. It's it's um, it's a new it's a new time. Yeah. All right. I you know our number one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. I, I want to talk about. Uh, Jupiter Joe Thomas, you want to give him a call. You know, he's offering free phone consultations. We'll talk, talk to him about annuities. I was talking to a good friend of mine yesterday who's recently retired, and uh, he told me he sold his house. And he's talked to me about this a couple times since Joe Thomas joined us, but I was talking to him over the weekend because now everything's 
in place. He sold his house, he's retired, and he bought a new house, and the money he had left over between the new house and the old house, he put into annuities, and he's getting money every month. And he was talking about how great it is. <laughs> you know, it's, he, has a, he has Social Security, he has a small pension, and, and a small veteran's benefit, and he said without the annuity, he wouldn't have enough money coming in every month. He'd, he'd be done. And that annuity income is not only helping him get by every month, it's making his life comfortable where he can have some fun and go out to dinner and do a little traveling. It's absolutely amazing. You know, with annuities, your money is not at risk. You will not lose your money. Give Joe Thomas a call. No matter where you're located, you can take advantage of the no charge phone consultation. Here's the number, 561 561- Seven four three zero nine ninety nine five six one seven four three zero nine ninety nine. If you miss the number, just go to his website, jupiterjoe.com. All right, we'll be back after this. Don't sit on the sidelines.
All right, we're back. Call us on hold. Stand by. I'm Brian. Steve is here. Now, a week and a half ago, America was attacked um, at the southern border. A, I don't know, a platoon of illegals rushed Texas National Guardsmen, overran the Texas National Guardmen, Guardsmen, forced their way into the country, and uh, were apprehended. And yesterday, you've heard of activist judges. Uh, yesterday, the judge in the case released a uh, Judge Umberto Acosta released them. They attacked soldiers. I mean, my goodness. I don't know what's going on, Steve. I mean, what's what what's what what's happening? Yeah, you know the um, the Democrat that shot dead uh, Officer Diller a week ago today uh, of the NYPD blue. You know, you know that shooting everyone's talking about. They had the funeral over the weekend. Do you know when he was? This is crazy. Um, that Democrat thug that shot dead Officer Diller, when he was arrested and they searched him, he had a shiv in his rectum. Yeah. And the reason he had a shiv in his rectum is because um, he, he, he's such a bad guy, he was always prepared to go to jail. So he had the shiv there, I guess, all the time. I mean, I was reading these reports over the weekend. I've never heard of such a thing just in case he got arrested. That's, that's, that's um, New York. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, Terry from Florida. How are you? All right, Terry. What's up, Terry? Hey. Hey, how you doing, Steve? Hey, you Excellent. know what? What you played early? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, as you played earlier about the priest, I've been telling you this for the longest, and you just keep playing that. I told you that we are in the apocalypse. This is the time of the apocalypse, all right? The time of the Antichrist. And I told you about the Antichrist, and I told you who he was, the orange man. Trump. The orange man. The orange man. <laughs> yeah, the orange man, Trump, with the orange tan. Mm. And it is, it said, I've been telling you this. No, no, no. The priest, the priest said, uh, and that was about seven, eight months ago, he said the Antichrist is in office now. He's going to get in office. No, he said he's in the office. No, no, no. The pre, the, the, the audio I said, he said he's in, he said he's in office. Excuse oh The only thing that's really on the way out is you as a caller. No. I know. I know. All right. Can't handle the truth. All right. You can't handle it. Yeah. I mean, give me a break. So we, we have uh, the, uh, the, the Democrats are on a roll. Okay. So we have the uh, Transgender Visibility Day on the holiest day of, of the year for Christians at the White House. Christians are told to silence, no, no displays of Christianity, but the transgenders can be visible. Uh, we have a uh, liberal judge letting those who attacked U.S. soldiers at the southern border out of jail. We have a Democrat who murdered a police officer in New York City, should have been in jail. You see these illegals that are raping and murdering our women in this country, brought here by the Democrats. I mean, and, and now um, uh, some other Democrat constituents, the, the terrorist supporters, um, this is in the New York Post. Um, I know they're calling them climate change people, but they, they got up there and said, free Palestine. Um, Palestinian Hamas supporters stormed the mass at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City on Saturday night. It's, I hope it's all backfiring on them. Well, yeah, but this is especially, I mean, because he's alienated both sides with great skill. Like he's tried, he's tried to appeal to both sides, and what he's done is alienate both the Arab and Jewish side. Yeah, but, yeah. The argument, yeah. putting that supporting him, well, which is... Uh, except his junkie kids and his wife who want their money. And Zelensky is a big Biden supporter because he keeps sending them money. But th these um, Palestinian terrorist supporters that stormed the mass at St. Patrick's uh, Cathedral Saturday in New York City, Cardinal Dolan was doing the mass when this happened. I've never seen anything like that happen at an American church. And, you know, I don't know how many Muslims Obama brought here during his eight years, but boy, that Muslim ban of Trump's, it was a smart move. Um, 
these are really twisted people. And you look at every move that's coming out of the left, like the, you know, the, the, the fundraiser during the, the, the funeral. And then here's a story. This is out of um, uh, Berkeley. Um, Berkeley is, um, do, uh, they, they are doing an investigation on the amount of white influence at the, um, at the school. Uh, they're, they're, uh, yeah, they're banning white people from a community, uh, owned farm that's co-owned by the university. So they're bringing segregation into Berkeley, which is supposed to be one of the most enlightened liberal places on earth. They're bringing back racial segregation. They're having areas where no whites are allowed. And, you know, what's crazy about all these things, because people say, oh, this doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me. Um, what surprises me is, you know, there's no one around that has any sense that says, you know, if we have these areas of the university where white people aren't allowed, that's like the whites only bathroom and drinking fountains. That's segregation. We can't segregate. They le I don't left the building, left the, the, every, the, everything. You know, they do the, um, the fundraiser during the funeral of the cop the other day. There was no one who said, you know, we're having the fundraiser in the city. We, should, we shouldn't do it. We should put it off till another week or two. They don't have any The The uh, transgender thing they did on Easter Sunday, no one said, you know what, that, that, it looks bad. They, there's, who's, who's the adult around? I mean, things are b beyond twisted. The judge letting the uh, attackers off. There was a, uh, they've come back on this because they got a lot of uh, blowback. But one of the city leaders in New York was banning the, um, the flag remembering 9-11 heroes from fire trucks. Did you see this over the weekend? Now, the, the fire department rose up against that and they, they pulled back on it. But still, they... The, the city was trying to do that. You can't re to remember 9-11 heroes on fire trucks is institutionalized racism, they said. I don't know what that even means in relation to 9-11 because people of every ethnicity uh, died on that day. Get over the party. Yeah, but, that, but, but that's the party that's running the country. Okay? So, you know, the, there's always been wackadoodle liberals out there. That's, that's not new. What's new is, is the wackiest of the wackadoodle liberals are running our country. They're in charge of everything. And you see what it is they are doing. Now, uh, we're going to take our bottom of the hour break. Your calls are welcome. I know. What a day. I, I wish this was all a big April Fool's joke. It is April 1st. None of this is uh, an April Fool's joke, and it's certainly not funny. Uh, the number to call in is toll free one 465 2631 888-465-2631. I'm Brian. Steve Kane's here. We'll be right back. Making morning radio great.
All right, we're back. I'm Brian. Steve Kane is here. So uh, the White House, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Just throw something out. Uh, you know how uh, I'm in love with polls, especially in terms of uh, the media, you know, predict mm. which way everything's going. I think we're at a new stage. I would call it now the, uh, this is the pre-convention low for both sides. And uh, they're getting ready to break into a new phase. I mm. come out of these conventions, there's going to be a new phase that, I, that I'm predicting. And I just like to do it. I think it's fun. I, I think it gives the listeners something to follow. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, after these, I think the, the turning point of this thing is going to be the Democratic Convention. And I think all hell is going to break loose. In sh where, where is it? In Milwaukee? Yeah. In Milwaukee. And it's going to mark the beginning of a new period in the polls where they start to reflect the general disgust that uh, the, the, I, I don't know whether to call them the good guys or what, the, the, the pro-Trump people are going to start to show up in the polls as the favorites. And in areas where, this is the key, in areas where Trump has not established any clear leads up to this point, I'm talking about places like New York and the, and the, and the East, where the, they didn't give him much of a chance, I think it's going to enter a stage where all of a sudden those people... Well, yeah, I, I would say we're, we're getting signals of that, like Michael Rappaport, uh, Rappaport liberal Democrat from New York. And I... There, the, you're right about the conventions, too. Now, the White House, through Jean-Pierre, who, by the way, did you know that she's the first black immigrant gay press spokesperson that also has a vagina? Yeah, it's amazing. She said that everything she does, gay and an immigrant and black, and she says everything she does is historic. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, she responded to the Transgender Day of Visibility with this because there was a lot of outrage over this. She says, on Transgender Day of Visibility, the Biden-Harris administration honors the extraordinary courage and contributions of transgender Americans. And I want to throw this out. Um, what his, um, transgender individual has made a historic contribution to the country? Because I don't know of one. Do you, Steve? No, that's, that's, you're talking about somebody that was in the news. I'm talking about, no, 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 no. A, she says tr they're honoring transgenders who have made contri the contributions they've made to America. What, I'm not asking for famous transgendered people. You can say Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner. No, no, no. What historical contribution has been made to the United States by a transgender person. Because I keep hearing them say this without giving an example. She went on to say that the Biden-Harris administration reaffirms our nation's commitment to forming a more perfect union where all people are treated equally, except the Christians at the White House on Easter who were ordered not to, to talk about Christianity. Well, there is a poll. There is a poll um, that was done by Rasmussen. And it, and it, it says that 70% of reg this was a poll done for Easter. Seventy percent of registered voters believe th uh, that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Okay, seventy percent of registered voters. When you're and this is an important poll with what they did over the weekend, and I'll tell you why. There are diff there are three different um, polling samples that are used for polls. There are uh, likely voters registered voters and Americans, okay? Um, the, mo uh, the, the least accurate are those that are of Americans because they may not be registered to vote. So when you see a poll of Americans, it leans to the left strongly 
because they may not even be registered to vote. Hey, they may not even be Americans. They may be South Americans, right? Um, registered voters is also leans to the left because uh, registered voters may never vote. You can be registered and not vote. Likely voters is the most scientifically accurate. Likely voters are classified as someone that says that they voted in the past two elections and plan on voting in the next. So um, the, the registered voters, 70% of registered voters say they believe that Jesus rose from the dead. That is a liberal-leaning poll and, uh, of Americans at 70%. To get a number like that in a liberal-leaning poll would have to tell me that of likely voters, those who believe Jesus was resurrected from the dead has got to be around 80%, which is pretty high because you have a lot of people that aren't Christians. You got Jews, you got Muslims, and you got people that are nothing. So, I, I mean, I, so, you know, when you see uh, everything that's, that's uh, uh, going on here and th with this thing over the weekend, I don't think, I know this audience voiced a lot of opinions on this today and great calls today. But the outrage over this event at the, at the White House, the Transgender Visibility Day, is bigger than people realize. If you look at the outrage online, it is huge. And uh, between that and the fundraiser in New York with Biden, Clinton, and Obama, uh, while the funeral of, the, of, of Officer Diller was going on that President Trump went to, these two events in, in the last couple of days have done Damage that cannot be repaired to the Democrats, which is great for us and helps Trump. And, and what helps Trump helps us. Um, but let's take some calls. I'd like to hear your thoughts on all of this at one 465 2631 right, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is JJ from Mass. Hey. Hey, JJ. Hey, buddy. I, uh, well... For the, for the life of me, I I, um, I don't think I've been well this angry. I, I think the well I actually was back when the uh, when Hamas went into uh, Israel. But this is just it's it's absolute insanity to me that they would do this on, as you say, Brian, and quite rightly so, Resurrection Day. The um, the, group, the group, to me it's sort of a um, I guess polite words somewhat escaped me here, but um, it was a, what what they what they did, JJ, was uh, that what. What they went out of their way to do at the White House yesterday was signal an F you to Christians. That's what that's, that whole thing was about. Yes. I, I, I look at it sort of as like the, uh, you know, it's like a blivet bag. Uh, my mom used to say that about politicians. Um, it's sort of like gravity at the, at the back end of a bull. And to me, yesterday was the biggest pile of gravity I've ever seen. I mean, this is a, just a continuation and assault on Christians, you know, basically on our country, of all that is good and decent, the morality, our ethics, values, everything about us, our, our very souls, and, and, and this con job, okay, it's like a, a cut, the death of a thousand cuts, but the cut is not of the flesh. It is of, um, you know, the cut represents lies, the con job, the psyop, divide and conquer, um, you know, and it's just, I just, they've got, this to me represents their final to me, represents their final destruction. It's like a yeah. of desperation. I, and I just am so friggin' pissed off at these people. I don't know, how do we get such idiocy in our country? That because because the people that, you know, I, I've used this example many, many times, and, and please don't say who they are, Steve, although they probably wouldn't mind. But about uh, 10 or 15 years ago, it, it, I, was watch, it was, I was watching this old episode of... Uh, of uh, uh, Oprah, and there were these two, they had swingers on, talking about how they have sex with, they're, they're swingers, and they were wearing disguises, and the voices sounded familiar, and I couldn't place them because they were in disguise, so I called up Steve, and I put the phone up to the TV, and I said, who is, the? and you, boom, you knew who it was, and they, they're, uh, and I'm not going to say who, but they're very prominent local business leaders, and I said to you, Steve, I said, what are they doing? You know, everybody that knows them, I recognize the voice, you recognize the voice, and you said they're in this swinger bubble where everyone's a swinger and they've lost touch with what's moral and immoral. So they think everyone's a swinging married couple and thinks it's hot. The people that are running the country are in this trans circle and they've lost sense of morality. And these are the same people that are siding with the terrorists against Israel and have gotten us 
in this war in Ukraine with Russia, uh, have erased our southern border. These are people that have lost touch with morality and, and morality. Darkness, okay, when you touch the shadow, it touches back and it can screw you up bad. And that, to me, is where our country is. But I will say this, Brian, you did, as angry as I have been today, I, I, you actually, on your show, brought a tear to my eye today. When the priest was talking about praying with our president and he kissed the baby, that moment, it just, um, yeah. I mean, that made me it's sort of uh, joyful. It's amazing. It, it really, it really was emotional for me. And also listening to that lovely, that poor woman. God bless her. The strength that she had in that eulogy was. Um, it's a very difficult thing to do. That. Mm -hmm. uh, that also, that also, uh, you know, was incredibly sad, but also beautiful. Absolutely. All right, JJ. I got to run. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll be right back. The cold. All right, and it's time to check in with William Youngerman from the offices of William Youngerman Incorporated with the first look at gold and the other precious metals for the week. William Youngerman, how are the metals starting off the uh, week now that Easter's over? Uh, metals are starting off very strong. We saw that last Thursday was the last trading day of the market, and gold gained $38.80 on that trading day, the last of uh, March. And uh, that closed out the week uh, at $2,233 for gold. Silver was up $0.34, cents, closing out that week at $24.94, while platinum gained $12 at $908, and palladium was up $26 at $998. The rally continues in gold overnight. We saw gold hit a high of $2,266, trading in a range from $2,243 to $2,266. And right now we're at twenty-two fifty. That's up another seventeen dollars today. Silver up six cents right now at twenty-five dollars the ounce. High overnight was twenty-five dollars and thirty-two cents. Platinum is down four dollars right now at nine hundred and four dollars, and palladium down eight dollars at nine hundred and ninety dollars. So certainly the the the, uh, the metals that have is the gold and the silver. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, things are just going strong. I, this is amazing. Now, you're back open for normal hours after the Easter uh, and the Good Friday and everything. William Youngman opens up at 10 a.m. You can stop in at 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca on the first floor of the Bank of America building just east of US-1 Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto Park Road, or give him a call. Again, he opens up at 10 a.m., 1-800-327-5010. 1-800-327-5010 and uh, online at williamyoungerman.com. All right, William Youngman, we'll talk tomorrow. Okay, have a great day. All right, back with your calls after this. Steve Kane Show. All right, it's the Steve Kane Show. Steve Kane here. I'm Brian. Oh, uh, you know, the cruise is less than a month away, Steve. Um, and I want to tell you, I'm very excited, and uh, those of you that are booked on the cruise, call Ian, our travel agent at Cruise and Travel Depot. You guys are booked. You guys know that, you know, this, the, our ship, we were sold out like three months ago, four months ago on this, on this cruise. It's sold out, but those of you that are already booked, you know Ian's number. Call him and sign up for the shore excursions, okay? We have these private shore excursions. In particular, uh, they're all exciting. I will be on all of them with you guys, by the way. I turn into a cruise director. I'm Judy McCoy from The Love Boat on these cruises. I'm the cruise director with our group, and uh, it's a lot of fun. But in particular, you want to make sure, mention this to your wife, Steve, the Aruba Catamaran Sunset Cruise. We have a private catamaran that we are taking in Aruba, off the coast of Aruba, out in the beautiful ocean on our private catamaran, which is a beautiful sailboat. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to watch the sunset together. It's going to be beautiful. Oh, and by the way, uh, open bar on the uh, catamaran. But call Lena Cruise and Travel Depot. Make sure you guys don't miss that one because it is going to fill up. All right. Uh, you want to go back to the phone, Steve? All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Brian and Steve. It's Berta from Texas. Berta, how are you I'm, doing today? I'm very sad because I'm very, very sad. <clears throat> to hear what my country has become. Um, it, what happened is completely blasphemous what they've done. And I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, 
and um, I do believe Jesus has well, risen. Rudy, you know, what you have to do is view the country as a work in progress <clears throat> that will keep you from getting too... too it, see, too it, it's not that. It, it got to the point that they want to actually bring down even our, our, our forefathers who wrote the Constitution who believed in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, but Steve, they have a bit in charge, though. No, 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 no. This is different. This is. They are killing everything that has to do with God, so they could bring down even more of the morale and do more. Evil. Steve, I mean, they, I slow, slow down for a second because you're calling from Bert, uh, Bertie. You're calling from Texas. Look at this. You know, we're talking about this earlier. This country was attacked by a platoon from Mexico of enemy soldiers. They attacked, not, not just at our border, they attacked the Texas National Guard soldiers and the Democrat judge just let them out of jail into America after this platoon attacked our soldiers at the southern border. You know, this is, the, the liberals have always been hate America first people, but now the most radical of Democrats are in charge of everything and they're implementing these wackadoodle ideas into everyday actions. The people, these are the people are America who's controlling our country today that our forefathers warned us about. Everything. Okay? This is if it, we've been warned and it's I got a question I'm gonna throw out to you guys. I I I, I was gonna see I wasn't going to talk about this transgender thing. I did a YouTube show over the weekend about it. I thought, you know, Easter's over. We're going to start a new week. And I, I felt called to do it. Um, I got a question for you guys. It, 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 and I'll throw this out to the audience. You can let us know, Berta, what you think. At, uh, but you guys can call in. Is, is this possible would it, it, to be done? Is it possible Joe Biden will uh, give citizenship to these millions of illegals through executive order? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Can he sign an executive order and give the illegals not just amnesty, but citizenship? Because you know what that gives them. Mm -hmm. Right. That was the whole plan. And, 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 and I think maybe the, all, this, all these horrible things are coming out, Brian. Maybe God is letting these things come out so Americans really could open their eyes. Because there's some Americans who really have their eyes shut closed. Well, this is a question of, in my, the, my framework, of it's got to get worse before it gets better. Don't we have to reach a depth before uh, Americans get sufficiently outraged that we throw these books out? But Steve, but if he, but if he gives, I'm not talking about amnesty. If he give, if if Biden gives citizenship to the millions of illegals, it, there's no getting better from that. It's over. Definitely a Venezuela. Yeah. Cuba. We would definitely look at our economy now. The 2,500 tickets went up to five grand. Mm. American people. Are and, and Steve, you know, this, this thing that you, you say, which I, so I agree with sometimes, it's got to get worse before it gets better. We are at the worst. It doesn't get worse. It doesn't get, it can't get much worse. You know, it's, it's a lot of work that Trump has to do when he comes in. Like, my husband's very upset about what happened yesterday, and I'm more of a Christian than he is. And he was very upset because to him, it was an action that they, this, this is it. They ran out of other options, so they're going to attack all the Christians. Like Brian said just previously, not even five minutes ago, he said a, a number, a percentage, a high percentage of people who believe in Christ. Yeah. Best. Okay, that's a very high. So the last thing they have to do is blast Christ so the morale. Mm -hmm. So down. I mean, they speak so bad about Russia, but Russia right now opened a huge box claiming that Jesus Christ is black, and now they're they're you know. They're, they're praising Jesus. We're, they're taking away that from us now. Mm -hmm. Look at yeah. the difference. They speak so horrible about Russia. But you know, I'll tell you, what they did yesterday, it, 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 now this is, it's worse because it's being done by the president of the United States. But remember when they, remember those, those idiots at the museum in New York that used to throw uh, doo-doo on the images of the Virgin Mary? You know, this is what this is what they did yesterday, except it was done not from some wackadoodle artist that's on drugs. It was done by the president of the United States. Yeah, and they're already doing that with the Virgin Mary in Spain. Mm -hmm. 
tomatoes, all that to the to statues of all the Catholic churches and doing graffiti in Europe. Yeah. The way I look at things is what happens in Europe, it just takes a little time for it to trickle down because it's the same power. And don't let the media tell you it was climate activists that did the attack at St. Patrick's Cathedral. They they got they when they got up they said free Palestine free Palestine that they didn't say global warming global warming climate change they said free Palestine. Exactly, they, you know, Brian, and, and what angers me the most, they really believe that the American people are stupid. Yeah, that's right. All right, take care. Thanks for the call. Great call. Uh, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, hi, Brian. It's Ross. Hey, Ross. Hi, Steve. How are you? How are you doing, dear? Okay. Uh, two things, Brian. Um, I believe that what he did was blaspheme God yesterday. And number two, I need to warn and I need, I don't know if President Trump is listening or his family or if you can get this to him. But yesterday I, yesterday I saw a guy who uh, is a director or something to do with MSNBC. And he wrote a post, and I guess he's been stalking Baron Trump since he was a little boy. And he wrote on a caption that today Baron Trump turns 18. He's yeah, yeah, and he took that. He, they, they forced him to take it back. Um, yeah. Read about that. Wanted to Listen, I saw Barron yesterday at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, he's six foot seven, and he has Secret Service uh, around him too. You got nothing to worry about with Barron. He's he, he, he looks like um yeah yeah I know. He's very handsome. He looks like his dad. He looks exactly like President Trump, and he wears those suits. It reminds me of those old interviews that I used to see of President Trump when I was a kid. I saw the picture of him where he was getting out of the car and he was hold, almost holding his dad's back. I've never seen a kid who loves to wear suits that much. Yeah, I think he's going to be like the next Donald Trump, to be honest. Mm hmm Yeah. I just wanted to warn you because I didn't want anything bad. Don't worry. No worries. Appreciate it, Ron. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, uh, yes. As it was... It I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this. Uh, uh, excuse me. You're a mental patient, okay? So you know I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you some advice right now. I know, I know. You're a mental patient. The next time, uh, slow down. I'm giving you a warning. I'm giving you a warning, okay? And this is a warning you will get only one time. I've given it to you before. There'll be no more warnings after this. We have a rule on this. No, no, a very few people do what you do, okay? We take calls screenless on the, on the program. I answer the calls live on the air, okay, for those that don't know. We have a one-day call per uh, rule, right? You can call once per day. The next time you call twice in one day, you're going to, excuse me, stop talking so you can hear, I want you to, I want you to hear this. The next time you call... The next time you call, uh, the next time you call more than once in a show, you'll be banned. Yes, that has nothing to do with your calls. The next time you call twice in a show, you will be banned. Okay, okay, there you go. Oh my goodness, I've given him that warning before, and he, it's not going to sink in because you know he's a mental patient. Plus, he's a liberal and doesn't like authority or anything, so he's going to have some problems. But uh, that's that. We don't have a lot of rules around here. That is one of them. Now I want to tell you guys um, at mypillow.com, huge savings. The twenty-five dollar extravaganza sale is going on. Um, you know, for twenty-five bucks, you uh, you can get the my pillow pet beds. Your dogs, your cats will love them. Mine do. They're one hundred percent machine washable, and the pet beds have the same patented fill inside as the my pillow. Uh, for 25 bucks, you can get uh, the MyPillow Giza Elegance pillows. These are huge discounts on top MyPillow products. Uh, I have the Giza Elegance pillows. They have that Giza cotton on the outside. It's an upscale luxury edition of the MyPillow. For 25 bucks, you can get the six-piece MyPillow towel set. I have a couple sets of these towels. They're spectacular. And there's many other top MyPillow products. Just 25 bucks with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. And it's free shipping site-wide on orders of $75 or more with our promo code Kane at MyPillow.com. You can also order by phone, 
716-4879. 1-800-716-4879. Promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. All right. So, you know, th this, this thing they did at the White House, do you put together the two things they did this week? The, 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 this thing at the White House yesterday and then the fundraiser in New York during the cop's funeral, I, th they're done. It, they're done. Okay? And, and this, the, the thing I started with today with Michael Rappaport sums it all up. You know, the, the people, they look, they look to the police to be able to keep them safe. And when they see the police getting whooped and the guys that attack them uh, home for dinner that day, they get scared. And when they get scared, they vote Republican, okay? So these, these two incidents this week, the fundraiser and the transgender day of visibility uh, on the holiest, most important day for Christians, Easter, Resurrection Day, they're done. And they've turned lifelong Democrats into Trump voters. And uh, you're not seeing a lot of polls right now because they don't want you to see the polls. But if they were doing some good polls, what we're talking about would be visible in all of them. All right. Well, we are out of time for today. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm Brian Craig. Steve Kane, of course, has been here. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. WSFS 1 all right, guys, if you're new, make sure you subscribe. And everyone else that's sub, please like the video, okay? There'll be a new podcast today, so look out for that. I'll see you then.